the end of the day, and you know this, pulling a trigger is really easy. It takes like, I don't know, five muscles, like an ounce of pressure. Who knows? Um, the hard part is like getting where you need to be. Uh, and the, the, it's the planning, it's the infill, it's the actions at the objective to even be in a spot where you can make that moral decision to, to pull the trigger. And then like understanding the environment and then making the moral decision. Yeah. So a lot of people always focus on that, um, that, that last second thing. It's like, look, that's the easy part, right? That's flipping a zero to a one. Um, and you can have a human do that, right? The hard part is all everything else, the training that, that enables you, the thinking that enables you to get to where you need to be to even be in a position position to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, so would you say somebody like me with, you know, very little understanding of how autonomous systems work in, in terms of war fighting capabilities is that my concern, understanding that me mechanical malfunctions take place, operational system malfunctions take place, that it, it, it's my lack of understanding of how everything works to be concerned that an automated fighter jet all of a sudden would just fucking blow a si sidewinder off and, and, you know, accidentally. Yeah, I think that's fair. Right? I, I, it's Tom, like, you're, you're too big of an idiot to understand. No, <laughs> no, but it's just not, it's an engineered system, right? Yeah. And so it's like, it's the probabilities of like, you know, is your gun accidentally going to discharge if you just leave it on your desk for 40 years, right? And yeah. it's like, no, it's not engineered to do that, right? Yeah. Probabilities are minuscule in terms of that happening. Could happen. Yeah. Right? Probably, you know. Yeah. But okay. if there's like a mechanical malfunction or something that wasn't manufactured the correct way, et cetera. But yeah, yeah very, very low probabilities. Uh, I, I still worry about it. You know, <laughs> I think it's just, it's the fear of the unknown. It's like not, not yeah, understanding. Yeah, I got you, you know, but don't worry. Yeah, good. All right. I'll just stick, I'll stick with you. In, in, case in the worst case, I promise you, you're better trained yeah. than, you All know, right. anybody yeah. else. And All right. you can, yeah, we'll, I'll take it. We'll fight the robots together. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> um, is there a, uh, an example or examples of where shield AI technology, uh, going past prototypes have made a tangible difference. Oh, hundred percent. Um, talk about them? yeah. A uh, couple of one, and I, I can't add specificity to one example because it, it look, I, I tell people it's, um, been used on the most important missions and like, I wish I could talk about it and it's incredible, but it's like, it'll be classified for, for, for well, decades. Yeah. Um, but without a doubt, it has brought service members home safely to their families. Um, it has gone into uh, buildings where there have been H bids. Um, and I'm glad it was the first thing in and uh, people have blown themselves up when they, they see that thing. Um, yeah. And so that like, it, that's, I'm most proud of when the product makes a difference. Uh, you can't say what fighter. that thing is. I can't tell you which missions or what it, yeah, what yeah. it was, yeah. but yeah. Um, the, um, in Israel, uh, this was awesome, right? It was used on, uh, October 8th, um, uh, October 9th and, and to rescue hostages, um, by our customers there. And I asked them, I was like, can I talk about this? Like, yes, please do, please do. Right. Israel's got, uh, a tough, uh, publicity campaign, right? They yeah. need all the help they can get. Um, and, uh, you know, we just got text messages back the other day from the Israelis, like this thing's kicking ass. And so that like is really awesome. Right. In yeah. terms of like the impact that it's having over there. They're like, yeah, this thing, they're saying, Hey, we, this thing saved a lot of lives on, was used on hostage rescue operations. We would have lost guys had this thing not been the first thing through the breach. Wow. Um, and then, um, man, I wish you could talk more about it. Yeah. The U S side. I, I, yeah, I yeah. can't. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's some high profile stuff. Yeah. Um, the uh, and then like on on the V bats, right? Uh, there's our 130 pound vertical takeoff and land drone. Um, does uh, the mission of a Group Five UAS, like a Predator or Reaper or Triton, at 140th the cost? Um, it is, uh, you know, replacing Scan Eagle, um, program record aircraft. Um, it is. Uh, it's interdicted over a billion dollars of drug, multi-billion dollars uh, of drugs in the Caribbean Sea. It's been on 17 deployments with Navy and Marine Corps. Um, we launched a swarming product on it last year. We're delivering that this year. Um, but that thing is, uh, yeah, it's found targets in UCOM, CENTCOM, uh, PACOM, et cetera. Wow. Yeah. Man, that's got to be uh, from a purpose and fulfilling yeah. kind of standpoint. Like, I don't think it gets yeah. any better. Yeah, it, it is. It's doing a, a technology venture back technology startup is awful just to start with <laughs> working but, with the government is awful and that, but like when you make mission impact, right. That's like, it's, tough to uh, be. it's like that. It feels, it feels good. Yeah. Right. And that's what I'm most proud of is when we actually make mission impact. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I'm, I feel the exact same way in the canine space, you know, kind of yeah. similar. Like when you have a contribution, I mean, it's a team effort as yeah. with everything is, but you know, when you play any role in, in a dog doing something that saves somebody's life or, uh, finds a missing child or, yep. you know, whatever, it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. In that same vein, um, can you talk to the different differences and similarities of autonomous robots kind of mimicking what a dog would be used for? And, and if, if a, if yeah. a canine and especially in that environment is going to be obsolete sooner than later? Um, so the answer is I don't think dogs will be obsolete. Uh, they might be obsolete. Not like humans might be obsolete before the dog is. Yeah. Um, maybe because I don't, like the sense of smell is such an area that people have not focused on. Yeah. Um, and uh, right, dogs have an incredible sense of smell. Um, and so um, in, in look, the, the quadcopter being the first thing in the room, people would be like, well, isn't dogs, aren't dogs supposed to do that? And like you and I know, like, no, dogs are not like uh bullet shields right and uh, for so many reasons like you don't necessarily like there could be many reasons why the dog's not the first thing in the door and like you don't want the dog there right? i remember like we're like look you know yeah for if you have a poorly trained dog or whatever it is like you don't want it to be the first thing in the door necessarily um it's yeah. not the yeah yeah i mean to me just on a like from a morality standpoint it like i would i would rather uh sacrifice a quadcopter than a dog yeah. every yeah. fucking time every you know time. Yeah, um, not even, yeah, not a question. Yeah, but yeah. I, I guess from a capability standpoint, if you, if you look at it just kind of purely uh, removing yeah. the the olfactory stand uh, or, or capability, because I'm curious, I guess, is there a, a potential that technology f from a, um, like from a camera standpoint or a sensor standpoint that can, Detect. No, that's that's right. It's the hard part is sensing things, and yeah. so that's the, that's the limitation of any autonomous system. Is like, what sensors does it have on board? And so you can put a bunch of cameras, and then there are like size, weight, power constraints because you'd be like, oh, put a hyperspectral camera on a quadcopter. Like, well, look, it's not going to fit, right? They haven't shrunk those things down, and there's not a market forcing reason to do that, and so that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, and so you're going to be limited by the sensors. And right, that's that's when I say like a dog's not going to get replaced. It's like there's not a lot of, I can't think of smelling sensors out there yeah. that are any good that you put them on a robot and then you have other things like it twirling around. And so that's why I say like your your autonomous system is only going to be as good as its sensors and its computer on board. Yeah. Like that's like the, you know, lim limiting factors yeah. first and foremost. I guess me, you know, me thinking of it, not that I'm trying to uh, invent things to put myself out of a job. Yeah. But not even looking at it from a a smelling or olfactory sensing standpoint, like there's there was some technology. I had a guest on here fairly recently. The show isn't out yet, but uh, it was working with some technologies about uh, being able to to read. Um, it was like um, what was the? It was like the vibe. Zach, do you remember? You know what I'm talking about. The, it was like the vibration from molecules being. Sig signature wise so unique that these these sensor machines not not doing anything to do with sniffing anything yeah. but but could detect the molecular vibration of everything and could find shit behind walls could you know yeah so you know, like kind of saying okay let's not even try to beat a dog's nose let's do it from a different angle like that yeah that see, is see through walls yeah like that look that there's there's a lot of things that need to happen for a technology to get fielded too, right? And so, uh, um, actually, I, I like when Elon Musk seems like technology does not just happen because you want it to happen, or technology does not advance because just because years pass. It's like people actually have to do it. And the reason people are building technology often is like there's some market force that's pushing them to do it. Um, and so it's like a big reason I don't think you've seen a lot of fielded see-through wall technology, even though it's been talked about for a long time. It's like there's not massive capital behind that and there are probably some limiting factors as it relates to the physics of being able to do that right. um so that's why i say it's like i i you're not going to see a massive market forcing function on you know driving to you know get you know yeah. replace dogs with yeah. autonomous systems yeah plus uh i mean just the like the slice of home companionship you know aspect is I think gets under undervalued uh, for a lot of people when they're looking at it just purely from a capability standpoint. You know the the morale boost that yeah. a fucking yeah, yeah, dog yeah. around the the hut. Yeah, dogs. Are, yeah, a hundred percent. All right. So talking about the 
the Nova two drone. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else you can add in terms of the stuff that was used uh, in Israel or have you kind of. Uh, that's, like that was the drone that was used okay. in Israel. And you can't really say what that Nova two is. Uh, it's got 15 cameras on board. It's got a GPU on board, NVIDIA GPU. Um, 15 cameras are its sensors. NVIDIA GPU is its brain. Um, it's doing that perception, cognition, action. It's exploring buildings, exploring tunnel systems. Um, and, yeah, that's what it's been doing. Have you seen footage from them? Yeah, I yeah. saw it on, on social media. One of our really? product managers saw it. Like, it's got it. There's, it's IR footage is very distinct. And... Uh, it showed across like you know an Instagram reel. Um, you guys look the what's fuck? That? Yeah, someone sent to me they're like, "Yo, it's Nova 2. and I was like, "Oh, that is crazy. That is a hundred percent." And like, it's doing yeah. like a a strafing run right around a building or whatever. So they're yeah. armed. No, was, when I say strafing, it was it was moving uh, okay. laterally. No, okay. they are not. Okay, so, could they be? Uh, they could be. Yeah, yeah. 